Hello everyone, welcome back to BookBeat and uh, our Spencer series. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, Spencer 4, it's called Promised Land, and in this book uh, basically we're going to meet one of the uh, key characters in the Spencer series, Hawk, for the first time. So um, <clears throat> let's jump right in and uh, see what we have today. <clears throat> So, um, <clears throat> besides Hawk, we have, of course, uh, Spencer, and then uh, other key players in uh, this book are a guy named Harvey Shepard and his wife, Pam, and... Um, <clears throat> Spencer is going to end up helping both of them for completely different reasons. Um, and uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, we've also got Susan in here. We've got um, uh, two women, Rose Alexander and Jane, who Pam becomes involved with and uh, eventually get involved in a bank robbery and kill a guard. Um, <clears throat> and then there is um, a guy named King Powers, who uh, actually uh, Harvey Shepard is in debt to. King Powers is kind of a loan shark and a hawk at the time is doing some work for him. So um, that's how we meet him. These are kind of, yeah, these are these are the key people in, in the story. And um, so where does it take place? Well, this one is mainly in Boston, but uh, also Hyannisport and Cape Cod, where the shepherds live. So they've obviously got money. And then on the uh, seedier, dirtier side of things, we've got New Bedford and Chelsea. Uh, sorry, anyone who lives in New Bedford and Chelsea. Uh, this is in the um, 70s and 80s. So uh, at this time, um, Robert B. Parker portrays these two areas as not very nice parts of... Um, the Boston, greater Boston area. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> oh, and they also, um, we, we spent a little time at the Plymouth Plantation. Wow. It's not much cultural stuff going on when they visit the Plymouth Plantation, but uh, they do mention it. Okay, so, um, what's the story about? Why are we here? Well, um, Harvey Shepard uh, hires Spencer to find his runaway wife. Um, <clears throat> uh, it's, it's fairly obvious fairly soon that she wasn't really in trouble, um, but she's just basically unhappy with her marriage. She and her husband are having some problems. And although they've got three kids, um, she just can't take it anymore and decides to leave. And so um, a lot of what's going on in this story is Spencer tracking down Pam, finding her, and uh, talking with her. And um, Spencer's way of thinking about all of this is, well, if, okay, her, her husband has hired me to find her, but he hasn't hired me to take her back home. That's kidnapping. I'll talk with her, see what's up. And if she doesn't want to go back, I, I'm not going to force her to go back and I'm not going to tell her husband where she is. I'll let him know that she's okay. Uh, actually, this comes up in future stories, a, a very similar theme where he's hired to find um, wives who've taken off. And it's the same thing. He, he doesn't want to force them back if they don't want to go back. The other main story is that <clears throat> while talking to Harvey Shepard, 
um, it becomes obvious that uh, Shepard's in trouble, uh, financial trouble, and um, Spencer first notices this because Harvey, Harvey's got a black eye. Um, it's obvious that he's been beaten. And then also suddenly Hawk shows up. And um, at this point in this series, Hawk and Spencer know each other, but um, they're not friends. They don't work together yet like they will be in future uh, books. <clears throat> and uh, they respect each other in some sense. At one point in, in the book, uh, Spencer says, you can trust Hawk. He's a leg breaker, but he's an honest leg breaker. If he says something, um, you can believe him. He won't lie. If he says he'll do it, he'll do it. If he says he'll let you go, he'll let you go. Um, that's kind of interesting. And uh, this comes up again later in, in that we can see that they have a kind of mutual respect for each other. It turns out that they used to box together when they were very young, uh, show up on some of the same cards, work out at the same gym. And I think, I'm not sure, I can't remember which book it is, but we find out a little bit more later about how um, maybe Spencer once helped Hawk when he was in trouble uh, when they were young. <clears throat> so uh, Spencer's got to help the wife find the wife, Pam, and then help her. She gets involved with some radical feminists who are into violence, and uh, that's not good for her. Uh, she's not that type of person. And then Harve and his troubles with uh, Hink, King Powers and Hawk, uh, basically concerning money and a uh, big business deal that um, Harvey Shepard's involved in. So these are the two main stories. So um, what are some of the more important action scenes? What are the, some, some of the more important things that happen in the story? Well, uh, near the beginning, uh, when Spencer is tracking down Pam, he finds out where she's staying, where she's staying. He goes up, knocks on the door, and uh, a huge woman comes out. And uh, she ends up kicking him in the nuts. And um, to defend himself, he basically gets her into a fight with her. He throws one left hook and, and sends her down to the floor. And he, he doesn't like doing it. He says the first time he ever hit a woman in his life, but um, there was no other way to get around it. Um, uh, the next kind of big scene is when... Um, Hawk and uh, Hawk gets into a fight with um, one of Hawk's flunkies, a guy named Powell at the hotel pool. And um, to Hawk, it's very amusing. He, know, um, he knows that Spencer's going to basically kill this guy and, well, I mean, beat him badly, easily. And he, he's kind of smiling and enjoying the confrontation and, and and says to uh, Spencer before Spencer throws him in the pool, don't kill him. He does errands for me. So this is the first uh, time that we meet um, Hawk. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of interesting. I'll talk more about that in a second. Um, what else goes on here? Pam and her two friends. Well, there are a few others involved. Rob a bank and kill a guard. Like I said, um, they're a radical feminist group modeling themselves after the Black Panthers. They need guns to be legitimate. They need guns to take be taken seriously, so they need money. They don't really know what they're doing. They have no idea what they're doing, but um, <clears throat> this is who they are. Uh, what else? So um, some other important things in the story. Spencer s decides to set up powers and the radical feminists till he, his idea is to kill two birds with one stone 
Uh, he's going to entrap them all, and, and he gets the police and the DA in on it. Uh, it's a sting. Um, so when they come and pay the money for the guns, the police are going to uh, move in and arrest everyone. But um, <clears throat> Spencer works a deal that so, so that Harvey and Pam uh, will not be arrested and will be set free. Um, and uh, Hawk is there, but uh, Spencer warns him a few seconds before the police move in, and Hawk's able to uh, get away. And that's kind of a su surprising thing that he did that, and uh, that comes up later because um, almost as soon as um, King Powers is arrested, he's, he's released on bail, and uh, there's a showdown. Uh, near the end of the book at the shepherd's house. They're all there, and uh, I'm going to let you read that to find out what happens. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice uh, action <clears throat> scene in the book. Um, so, uh, what surprised me in this book? Well, um, first of all, Spencer's hatred of racism comes out very strongly. Um, uh, when, um, Harv, when, uh, Harv Shepard is threatened by Hawk and he's telling Spencer about it later, he says that, that nigger this and that nigger that. And, um, Spencer got really angry and said, don't call him nigger. His name is Hawk. Yeah, of course, it, it might be just a respect for Hawk, but I think overall that's the kind of person Spencer is. Um, other interesting things here. Well, okay, <clears throat> I've I mentioned in in uh, the last video concerning book three, moral stakes, that I wanted to try to concentrate on as much as possible on Hawk and. I told you I came into this series in the middle, and one of the things that uh, leaves me a little uncomfortable is how Robert B. Parker handled the writing of, of Hawk and Spencer and Susan, but I think maybe especially Hawk. What was it in this book that made me so kind of uncomfortable? I felt like I wasn't really reading a Spencer novel some, some of the time, or um, that Robert B. Parker maybe didn't write the book, just like I feel it, that it's obvious when I re read the uh, Ace Atkins uh, Spencer novels that um, he wrote after uh, Robert B. Parker passed away. Um, they just, something's off. And I read through the book again and thought about it, and I realized what it is with Hawk anyway. In this book, Hawk talks way too much. And the latter Hawk doesn't talk a lot. Um, <clears throat> so I think, yeah, this is something that Robert B. Parker developed and figured out a uh, little, little by little, or, or maybe very quickly, because by the time we get to book 12, which, well, it's 12 years later, uh, eight or nine years later than this one was written, and so he's obviously developed as a writer, but he's figured out how to handle things here. Um, Hawk, yeah, Hawk, Hawk is very intelligent. He's very funny, he's very clever, but he doesn't talk too much, and that's part of his persona. When he does talk, it surprises us. But in this book, he's just talking and talking and talking, and it felt very awkward. Um, okay, what else is interesting here? Well, um, I was surprised about the conversation that took place in Hawk's car between Hawk, Spencer, and Susan. Yeah, Susan is in the, in the book, too. There's a lot of Susan in this book, uh, and it's a very important part of the series. But um, basically, Susan's trying to figure out who Spencer is and 
who Hawk is and why they do what they do, I think. And um, she asked Hawk, don't you feel guilty about earning money from hurting people? And Hawk says, no, Spencer does the same thing. And um, well, and Susan says, yeah, but I don't really think he does it for money. And Hawk laughs and says, yeah, that's why he's still riding around a piece of junk car where I'm riding around in this fancy convertible. Um, OK, so uh, Susan and Spencer are already um, going through some problems. And the problem is, um, who are they? Are they dating? Are they a couple? Um, are they a monogamous, monogamous couple? Um, Susan wants Spencer to say, I love you. Susan wants Spencer to ask her to marry him. But when he finally does, she says, no, I didn't really want you to. I don't really want to get married. I just wanted to hear you say it. Um, and um, so I don't, I don't think that ever seriously comes up again, the idea of them getting married. But the big one is right now they live separately. She has got her own place and Spencer's got his own place and he likes it that way. And as the series goes on, Susan's going to push him to uh, live together. And they, they try it out in, uh, in a future book or two, and it doesn't work out. <clears throat> but uh, we can see the, the seeds of this discontent and this, mm, there's just something bothering the two of them about the relationship that um, they eventually work out and spend the whole series always talking about. Um, <clears throat> so that was a little bit of a surprise and, and very interesting. Yeah. Um, other things that surprised me? Well, not really surprises. Um, I mentioned before, uh, repeats. The, these books are always funny. There are just so many one-liners that come up. And... Um, uh, the way Spencer talks, uh, I caught a few things that um, surprised me this time. Uh, he, were, he uses words like honey and my love. And in future books, he doesn't really do that. So this is another thing that Robert B. Parker uh, kind of came to grips with. Um, Spencer's 40 years old. Him and Hawk are the same age, around the same age. So it's not so much that Spencer's still young. He's 40. He's not young anymore, right? But I think it just has more to do with how Robert B. Parker wants to portray them. Okay, so um, repeats. Yeah, uh, of course, we've got Spencer. We've got Susan. <clears throat> We've got um, Spencer's dry humor. We've got uh, Spencer's interest in sex. Uh, we have uh, Spencer cooking. Um, I thought in this particular um, book, the amount of cooking was just about right. I enjoyed reading it, but uh, it wasn't so much that I got sick of it. So, yeah, it was good. Um, another repeat. Well, guess what? We have another dysfunctional family. Actually, it turns out not maybe that bad, but uh, just a married couple having problems. That kind of thing comes up quite often in uh, Spencer books and gives Robert B. Parker and Spencer a time to contemplate the relationship between men and women, I think. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so let me, um, let me now go to a few of my favorite lines and, uh, okay, first is from chapter three. 
uh, on page 22. Okay. So, uh, why this one? Guess what? This is the very, very first time that we meet Hawk. So, Shepard appeared from the door past the stairs. With him was a tall black man with a bald head and high cheekbones. He had on a powder blue leisure suit. This is the 70s, right? And a pink silk shirt with a big collar. The shirt was unbuttoned to the waist, and the chest and stomach that showed were as hard and unadorned as ebony. He took a pair of wraparound sunglasses from the breast pocket of the jacket, and as he put them on, he stared at me over their rims until very slowly the lenses covered his eyes and he stared at me through them. I looked back. Hawk, I said. Spencer. Shepard said, you know each other? Hawk nodded. I said, yeah. Shepard said to Hawk, I've asked Spencer here to see if he can find my wife, Pam. Hawk said, I'll bet he can. He's a real firecracker for finding things. He'll find the ass off of thing. Ain't that right, Spencer? You always been one of my heroes too, Hawk. Where are you staying? I'm over amongst the offies at the Holiday Inn, Mars Spencer. We don't say offies off off offies anymore, Hawk. We say honkies. And you don't do that kingfish dialect any better than you used to. Maybe not, but you should hear me sing shortening bread, babe. Yeah, I'll bet, I said. <clears throat> Hawk turned toward Shepard. I'll be in touch, Mr. Shepard, he said. They shook hands and Hawk left. Shepard and I watched him from the front door as he walked down toward the caddy. His walk was graceful and easy, yet there was about him an aura of taut muscle, of tight, coiled potential that made it seem as if he were about to leap. Hawk looked at my 68 Chevy and looked back at me with a big grin. Still first cabin all the way, huh, babe? I let that pass, and Hawk slid into his Cadillac, Cadillac and drove away. Yeah, um, kind of an inter interesting start here. And um, <clears throat> let's move on. Some Spencer talking to Harvey Shepard about Hawk. Harv, I said, you got more troubles than a missing wife. What do you mean by that? I mean, I know Hawk. I know what he does. He's an enforcer. What the kids on my corner used to call a leg breaker. He freelances, and these days he freelances most often for King Powers. Now, wait a minute. I hired you to find my wife. Whatever business I'm in with Hawk is my business, not yours. I'm not paying you no I'm not paying you to nose around in my business. That's true, I said, but if you're dealing with Hawk, you're dealing with pain. Hawk's a herder. You are you owe powers money? You owe powers money? I don't know a goddamn thing about powers. Don't worry about powers or Hawk or anybody else. I want you looking for my wife, not peeking into my books, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I've spent a lot of business doing I've spent a lot of years doing my business with people like Hawk. I know how it goes. This time Hawk came and talked to you pleasantly enough, spelled out how much you owed and how far behind you were on the vig and when you had to pay it by. How the hell do you know what we were talking about? And at the end he told you with a friendly enough smile what would happen if you didn't pay. And then I came, and he said goodbye politely, and he left. <clears throat> Harv, Hawk means it. Hawk is a bad man, but he keeps his word. If you owe money, pay it. 
If you haven't the money, tell me now and we, we, and we can work on the problem. But don't bullshit me and don't bullshit yourself. If you're dealing with Hawk, you're in way, way far away over your head. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is interesting too, I think, because, okay, um, I don't know, what are we, what are we to make of, of Hawk? I mean, most of, most of what we read about Hawk in this book is actually not very good. Um, later, near the end of the book, Hawk and Spencer kind of help each other out. And um, Hawk says something to Susan earlier and then later about them being very similar in many different ways and not being all that different. And, and so I guess they respect each other. I think the big thing is they have this moral code that they go by, one of them being that they don't lie, that they that you can trust what they say. But, you know, up, up until now, as far as we know, Hawk has been a leg breaker. Um, but as the series moves on, he and Spencer become very good friends, work together all the time, obviously respect each other deeply. There's, there's even a kind of love there that um, between them they die they would die for each other for sure but not at this point in the series and so <clears throat> this is a real big surprise to see what happens how the relationship between Hawk and Spencer develops um, how their personalities change I think because of one another I mentioned in previous books Spencer um, admits to being afraid. He's nervous. He's scared. He sweats. He's got stomach aches. But after he and Hawk start uh, working together, all of that disappears. And I wonder if it's because of the influence they have on each other or just the way that Robert B. Parker um, decides to handle that and and how to portray them, how to develop and change the character. Well, um, we've been talking about uh, Promised Land. And uh, thanks for joining me. And uh, talk to you next time. This was a great book. Not, not the best, but uh, a very good book. Give it um, 8 out of 10. And um, see you next time. Take care.